For almost a year now, he has been taking photographs of abandoned things. There are at least two jobs every day, sometimes as many as six or seven. And each time he and his cohorts enter another house, they are confronted by the things, the innumerable cast-off things left behind by the departed families. The absent people have all fled in haste, in shame and confusion, and it is certain that wherever they are living now, if they have found a place to live and are not camped out in the streets, their new dwellings are smaller than the houses they have lost. Each house is a story of failure, of bankruptcy and default, of debt and foreclosure, and he has taken it upon himself to document the last lingering traces of those scattered lives in order to prove that the vanished families were once here, that the ghosts of people he will never see and never know are still present in the discarded things strewn about their empty houses. The work is called Trashing Out, and he belongs to a four-man crew employed by the Dunbar Realty Corporation, which subcontracts its home preservation services to the local banks that now own the properties in question. The sprawling flatlands of South Florida are filled with these orphaned structures, and because it is in the interest of the banks to resell them as quickly as possible, the vacated houses must be cleaned, repaired, and made ready to be shown to prospective buyers. In a collapsing world of economic ruin and relentless, ever-expanding hardship, trashing out as one of the few thriving businesses in the area. No doubt he is lucky to have found this job. He doesn't know how much longer he can bear it, but the pay is decent, and in a land of fewer and fewer jobs, it is nothing if not a good job. In the beginning, he was stunned by the disarray and the filth, the neglect. Rare is the house he enters that has been left in pristine condition by its former owners. More often, there will have been an eruption of violence and anger, a parting rampage of capricious vandalism, from the open taps of sinks and bathtubs overflowing with water, to sledgehammered, smashed-in walls, or walls covered with obscene graffiti, or walls pocked with bullet holes, not to mention the ripped-out copper pipes. By now, his photographs number in the thousands, and among his burgeoning archive can be found pictures of books, Shoes and oil paintings, pianos and toasters, dolls, tea sets and dirty socks, televisions and board games, party dresses and tennis rackets, sofas, silk lingerie, caulking guns, thumbtacks, plastic action figures, tubes of lipstick, rifles, discolored mattresses, knives and forks, poker chips, a stamp collection, and a dead canary lying at the bottom of its cage. He has no idea why he feels compelled to take these pictures. He understands that it is an empty pursuit of no possible benefit to anyone, and yet each time he walks into a house, he senses that the things are calling out to him, speaking to him in the voices of the people who are no longer there, asking him to be looked at one last time before they are carted away. 